Okay, I think I'll hold it. My name is Jenny Gruen, also known as Janinski, and I live in Reading. I work as a trainee hospital pharmacist at a hospital, but I do music, and I like doing that. We read all my messages and found the plastics nasty though How blinded I was by infatuation Can't promise but I'll see you in a bit Yeah, I'm going out to see you, know she in a bit For a while I've been trying to reach out and now I found you It's getting harder with pretend I confused you for All that I deserve, know that I deserve more now Okay, I was born and raised in Hong Kong, so I lived there for about 10 years before coming here, but I'm Nepalese. My parents are both from Nepal. Um, I would say Hong Kong is a very competitive environment, so growing up, everything was a competition. Even getting into kindergarten or primary school, you had to, you know, to do interviews to get in. I think I was raised that way, but I also liked enjoying my time and not be competitive about everything but it's hard when everything matters and you have to be like the top of the class and everything. Yeah so not so much Nepalese culture and we did, I didn't even speak English up until coming here like on the flight here literally we were learning English. I remember watching Wizard of Waverly Place so um, that's why I have a slightly American accent. I think I was really chaotic my mom would say that I wanted to do everything so she gave me she made me do swimming lessons, taekwondo, um, singing not so much, but I was involved in choirs myself. In primary school, I would just participate. Basketball, football, all of that. So, yeah, I grew up wanting to do everything. I kind of put myself in everywhere. <laughs> but not really focused on one thing until recently. Yeah, I remember wanting to be a, at one point I wanted to like paint, I wouldn't I want get involved with that. I also wanted to dance, I wanted to become a professional tennis player, I, I wanted to do a bit of everything. But as time went on, I realised that education was the most important. So I just stuck to studying and I kind of calmed down and wanting to do a bit of everything. Um, I joined the choir in primary school and we had a teacher called Mrs Fung and she was the most inspiring and encouraging teacher ever. Obviously in choir in, in Hong Kong, all the words were in Cantonese and I couldn't pronounce it properly, even, being, even though I was raised there. Um, so she would sit one-to-one -one with me and help me with my pronunciations and there, there was like these ups and downs and do me, all of that. She would teach me one-on-one -on -one and she'd always encourage me. I was the only Nepalese there in the class full of Cantonese Chinese people. So I felt special. I feel like after that, I realized maybe she saw something in me and that made me see something in myself. I found this, um, oh, I think it's in my shed, but I found this guitar. Oh, I can take it out, can I take it out? Yeah, yeah. It's red. I'll be right back. This is um, 11 years old. Really? Yeah, basically. The first house I moved into in the UK, um, there was a shed and the shed was such a mess. There was everything in the shed, it was so gross. And then I found this in the shed. Oh God, it's so gross. There was only four strings, so I thought it was a ukulele. So I brought it to school and I was like 12 and it's like, guys, I have a ukulele. And I started a ukulele club with that. <laughs> yeah, a ukulele club with this guitar that I thought was a ukulele with four strings. So I started learning the ukulele myself and I, the basic C, G, A minor, F chords. I started teaching, teaching people that were there. And then, yeah, we got some, me and my friend started running the ukulele club for three, four years while we were in secondary school. And we got some citizenship award for trying to get youth involved in music or creativity. 
But yeah, her name was Bethany. Shout out to Bethany. <laughs> if I hadn't found it, I think I would have begged my dad for a guitar or something. But I'm glad I found it because it started me off with something simpler than a guitar. Because that would have been so daunting. But ukulele was four strings and I love it. It's so cute. And it's nylon. So I'll just write stuff and listen to it and note it down but not really record it. But there's, when I got an iPhone, I started recording everything on my iPhone. This is when I was like 14, 15. And that's when I started getting into writing. I didn't know if it was good or bad. I just started writing, I didn't really care. And in my room, I have little notepads of when I started writing all the lyrics. So I still have them, I kept all of them. So I, I would say they inspired me a lot to start. But then also just on YouTube, there were loads of people who do covers and I was like hmm, I, can, I can do that you just need a phone or a camera and you need an instrument you just sing so I used to do that a lot but I took most of my covers down because right now you'd want everything to be perfect and I think perfectionism got in the way of my creativity sometimes that in the midst of the crowds in the shapes in the clouds I don't see nobody but you his on his own tight should have ended it before it started all she ever got was broken hearted he was cheating on her trying to flip it back on her like a victim now she all alone is not an over now she got baggage on her shoulder but the new guy really loves her she loves him but she doesn't trust herself anymore Falling in love my dad my dad used to be against me doing music, to be honest, because I think he had a bad experience. When he was younger, I have photos of him. He used to play the madal and the guitar with his group of friends. And he, used, he had a little band and he told me how like he used to travel along the village for a show that he was performing at. But then once he got thrown, um, some people from the audience threw tomatoes at him. But he still laughed and carried on singing and because they were really bad. The setup was really bad and all of that. She told me about all of those experiences. But he thought um, music would corrupt me. He thought I, would, I wouldn't focus on studying and it would distract me from education. So when I first found this guitar, he tried to actually give it to my cousins or my younger sister. No, not my younger sister. My younger cousins. Because he didn't want me to get into music from his bad experience. Mom was still iffy about it. It's not that they hated me doing music. It was more that they didn't want to distract me. They wanted me to focus because we want to be financially stable before being able to do that, the, um, be able to be creative. So we can afford to be creative. I think the way he saw me get into music and the way he saw me write and play chords, he never, even though he knew how to play the guitar, he didn't teach me obviously because he didn't want me to get into that. But when he saw, how I go on YouTube and I find YouTube videos and learn chords and simple songs. I wouldn't go for him, um, go to him for help. I wouldn't say embarrassed, but I was still shy to sing in front of my dad. Just that daughter's other barrier was there. I wasn't as comfortable with my parents to openly tell them like, hey, I like music and I sing. I would hide in my room and sing in my room. But then once I sat them down and I said, this is a song I practice. I was like 15. So this is a song I practice and I wrote. And my dad would laugh, but I can tell that he was impressed and he was, who wanted to encourage me further. That's why he bought me the guitar. And then I think I got my dad back into music. So when guests came, he didn't used to sing or play the guitar, but slowly, he would be like, Jenny, get that little head in. I'm like, okay, why? And then I'll get the guitar, run down the stairs. And then, like, seeing my dad sing and play the guitar, I realized, like, that's where I probably got it from. But the new guy really loves her. She loves him, but she doesn't trust herself anymore. Falling in love Oh, I feel like a lot more people impacted me, you know? Like, from talking to you, I realized these people back then meant a lot to me now they still do as well I can't imagine my life without them not like that like I still, some of them I don't even talk to anymore 
but I don't think I would have become who I am without them, especially my parents. I think if they were different, if they weren't so accepting and encouraging, if they kept like belittling me and music and they're just like, oh, don't do it, then I don't think I would have had the creative freedom to do whatever I wanted. And the like, you know, when you're younger, you're like, can I sing? You're kind of embarrassed. But my parents never made fun of me. They would give sly comments like, oh, do the boy no dini, kyo the stone, go no But then when it was good and they're proud, they would tell me. They were, they're honest about it. And I appreciated that. But yeah, so I think I'm getting there. But when I'm at work, I haven't told anyone that I sing or like, um, I post videos and stuff like that. It just felt like I'm not there yet. I should be, I should say like, oh, by the way, I make music. Um, I want to be a musician, I want to be an artist. But I can't get myself to openly say that yet, I feel like. I don't know when I will be able to, if I reach a certain number of subscribers, followers. Like, I don't know what it takes for me to feel like an artist. But yeah, how much time I've left before I give up, you know, and I don't want to give up because of my full-time job, because this gets tiring and because I live at home, I have to cater to my parents and I can't always be out making music videos. I don't feel like I have that time. At this point, I think it's getting somewhere. I feel like people, are know, um, people know me by Janinski or like, oh, that Nepalese girl that sings in Reading. It's part of your identity, but I think in Nepalese societies, we're afraid to say it unless we're doing it full time, we're successful in it. Instead of being praised for being talented or creative, you're looked down upon. You're seen as someone that is not going to be financially stable. You probably won't be able to afford things and all of that. And I don't know how true that is. Maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I think, I think we're slowly reaching that point, like that progression in our Nepalese society. And we can do these things without being frowned upon. We can run businesses.